ideally you climb stuff when it's cold, have breakfast at one, two, three o'clock in the morning, something like that, and then you start climbing with a head torch, you get up as high as you can, as fast as you can. My name is Aiden Robbins, I'm a filmmaker. I make short documentaries about beautiful places around the world. And a huge part of that is sound design. It helps me to make my films more immersive and transport viewers to the locations that I'm sharing. Adobe Premiere Pro Beta includes some really exciting new audio updates, and I wanna show you how you can use them to make your sound design process better and faster. All right, here's the timeline for the sequence you just watched. It's a 15 second edit, lots of sound design, and it's a mess. I've kind of just added all the sound in as I went through. It's tough to tell what's what. There's very little organization, but don't be scared. This is solvable. Let's fix it. Premiere Pro Beta includes some new clip colors, which we can use to better organize this timeline and indicate what's what. To change a clip's color, you just right click that clip on the timeline, navigate to label and select a color from the dropdown. I'll use this to change the color of my music and voiceover to differentiate them from the sound design, changing my music to mango and my voiceover to lavender. This is a very fragrant timeline. You'll also notice these tags on your audio where each clip is automatically indicated as dialogue, music, or sound effects. These are AI powered and make it a lot easier to tell your clips apart. Now that I can tell at a glance which audio is which, I've moved things around to better organize the timeline. You can do this however helps you stay organized and work faster, but here's the structure I usually go for. Up top, I have my voiceover, kind of the main audio for this sequence. Below that is my music track, and then under that is the sound design. These first few tracks of sound are my ambient sound, like the wind and rock falls rumbling in the background, and then below that is the remaining sound design. Detail sounds like ropes and carabiners, as well as atmospheric sounds like whooshes and risers. How you structure your timeline is completely up to you, but it's worth having some kind of structure to help you tell all of these different elements apart and keep them organized. This is just how I do it. The clip tags are really helpful for identifying your audio, but they also allow you to more easily modify that audio. So if we click on one of these clip tags on the timeline, it'll automatically open the essential sound panel and expand the relevant menu for that audio type. If I click the dialogue tag on my voiceover, I'm given options to reduce noise, reduce reverb, add de-esser, or add EQ and enhance the vocals. I've used these tools on my voiceover to reduce the background noise and add a de-esser so those sounds don't come through as harshly. If I click the music tag on my music track, I'm given options to adjust the loudness, adjust the duration, or enable ducking, where the volume of the music will automatically change to avoid competing with your vocals. Next to the audio tag, there's also this effects tag, which we can use to further modify and add effects to our audio. So if we click this on our voiceover, it'll automatically open the effect controls panel and we can see and adjust the denoise and de-esser effects that we added previously. You can also right click the effects tag and select add effects to automatically open the effects panel where we can search for and add additional effects to that clip. I'd like to enhance my voiceover audio further, so I'll search for the parametric equalizer effect and drag it onto my voiceover audio. Within the options for that effect, I'll select the loudness maximizer preset and then drag these handles to boost the high and low frequencies of the audio, bringing out some more fullness in the vocals. I'll also use this on my music to add a low pass filter, which cuts out the higher frequencies of the audio, which just makes the music kind of sink away into the background and not compete with the vocals. Finally, you'll notice a small box on either end of an audio clip, and these are Premiere Pro Beta's new interactive fade handles. Just click and drag that box to create a nice, smooth fade in or out. The shape of the path created represents the clip volume, and you can drag the box around to modify the power and duration of that fade. If two clips are touching on the timeline, then dragging that fade handle will create a nice, smooth fade 
between those two clips. I use this constantly to smoothly and gradually bring audio in and out. For example, my music right at the start, I want it to smoothly fade in. So I'm gonna grab that fade handle and just drag it to create a nice smooth fade in. Here, I have a transition from one location to another and the ambient background audio changes. So I'm gonna create another smooth fade between those two tracks so that it's not a jarring transition. A good technique to keep in mind when you're doing this is something called a J cut, where you bring the audio in just a little bit before the visual. That way your audience hears the next scene before they see it and that cut feels less jarring. So here I have that fade between two different types of background sound and I'm actually gonna scoot it over a little bit so that that second scene's audio comes in a little earlier than its visual. Frequently to get a better view while I'm doing this, I'll expand the audio track that I'm working on and you can see another new feature of Premiere Pro Beta here is that the audio waveform is actually resizing with that track, which makes it a lot easier to see what you're doing here. And here we go. Using these new features in Premiere Pro Beta, we've quickly organized our timeline and added effects and fades to our audio. The result is not only a mix that sounds better, but a timeline that just makes a lot more sense. Ideally, you climb stuff when it's cold, have breakfast at one, two, three o'clock in the morning, something like that, and then you start climbing with a head torch, and get up as high as you can, as fast as you can. That's all I have for you today, so thank you for watching. Let me know in the comments how you plan to use these new features in your own workflow, and be sure to download Premiere Pro Beta to try these new features out for yourself.